Hello my scholars, this is my school YouTube channel and my name is Frank. In this video, we are going to be learning about motion. So sit down with us and we'll be right back. Welcome back to my school YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to be discussing about motion. So let's move to the next slide to see the objective of today's lesson. Okay, so at the end of today's lesson, we should be able to define motion, explain the types of motion with examples, say the cause of motion, explain relative motion, define circular motion, uh, show the relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity, then explain centripetal acceleration and force, then perform simple calculations involving centripetal acceleration and force. So let's move to the next slide. Let's begin with our lesson. So we are going to be looking at the meaning of motion. So what do we mean by motion? By motion, we simply mean the change of direction of a body with time. Okay, the change of direction of a body with time. Or we can as well say motion is the time rate of change of position of a body with time. In classical mechanics, the study of motion can be divided into two branches. We have kinematics and we also have dynamics. So what do we mean by kinematics? So kinematics is the branch of mechanics that deal with the study of motion of an object without reference to the force that caused the motion okay why dynamics is the study of force and how they affect motion so let's quickly uh, look at the cause of motion so what is the cause of motion so the cause of motion is actually force okay so force is the agent that causes motion so let's take for example a block of wood resting on a table will remain at rest until it is pushed or pull by an agent known as force okay an object will only move when a force adds on that object so let's we can look at the types of motion so basically we have four types of motion which are random motion translational motion rotational motion and oscillatory motion so we are going to be explaining these motions these different types of motions one after the other so let's start with random motion so what do we mean by random motion so random motion is the motion of an object in a zigzag or you can say in a random manner or you can say in an irregular direction so the direction of the motion of an object undergoing random motion cannot be explained and the reason is because the speed and direction of the motion of the object changes continuously okay so let's see some examples of random motion such as branyan motion so branyan motion is just the irregular movement of various particles suspended in fluid okay another good example is motion of gas particles we also have motion of smoke particles suspended in air. We also have motion of incense like B, butterfly, etc. are all examples of random motion. So the diagram below here depicts random motion. So as you can see from the diagram, we found out that the direction of motion of the object undergoing random motion is constantly what is constantly changing. So let's move to the next slide to see the second type of motion so we have another type of motion known as translational motion so translational motion is also known as linear motion so what do we mean by translational motion translational motion involves the movement of a rigid body from one place or point to another without rotation okay so each part of the body that undergoes this type of motion follow the same path and remain fixed to one another. So example of translational motion is the movement of a car from one point to another. Okay, we can say the movement of a car from Abuja to Lagos, for example, is an example of translational motion. So another example of translational motion is the motion of a man from one place to another. Let's take for, uh, for example, a man that is pacing from one point to another in his room, okay, or in his house. 
while a small ball thrown vertically upward too is also an example of motion. Then a book sliding from one end of an inclined plane to another is another example of translational motion. So the diagram below depicts translational motion, okay? The motion of a book sliding from one end of an inclined plane to another. So let's move to the third type of motion known as rotational motion. So this is a type of motion where all points in the body of the object move in a concentric circles and the center of the circles lie at the same as of rotation. And by concentric circles, we mean that the circles have the same or they have common center, okay, but their radius are different. So that's what we mean by concentric circles. So example of rotational motion is the rotational movement of the Earth or the rotational movement of the planet around the sun, the uh, rotational movement of blades of electric fan, just like the diagram here, the rotational move, uh, motion of a car wheel, okay, and we also have the rotational motion of hands of a clock. So let's move to the next slide to see the fourth type of motion, which is known as oscillatory motion. So oscillatory motion is also known as vibratory motion, we can as well call it periodic motion. So this is a to and fro motion of an object about a fixed point or about its main position. Examples of oscillatory motion include the to and fro movement of a simple pendulum as depicted in the diagram below, the to and fro motion of loaded test tube in water, the to and fro uh, motion of a mass hanging on spring, the toe and fro motion of a rocking chair, the toe and fro motion of diving board. We still have other examples such as the toe and fro motion of a talking drum. Okay, when you are hitting a talking drum, the skin goes to and fro. Okay, the contraction and expansion of the heart during breathing is also an example of oscillatory motion. Okay, so quickly let's look at relative motion. Okay, because we also said we are going to look at relative motion in our objective. Okay, so what do we mean by relative motion? Relative motion simply means the motion of an object in relation to another. The motion of an object in relation to another. The two objects might be moving in the same direction or they might be moving in opposite direction. Okay, we can as well still define relative motion as the continuous change of position of an object with respect to another object or to a reference fixed point. So let's take for example, you are in a moving car, okay, and you look out through the window and you discover that the trees are moving backward. In reality, the trees are not moving backward, but they are stationary, okay, but it is your car that is moving forward. So that is a typical example of um, relative motion. So relative motion is a concept. Okay, and calculation occurs with relative velocity, relative speed, or relative acceleration. So let's move to the next slide to see what we have to bear in mind when performing simple calculations involving relative motion. So the first point that must bear in mind is that if the two objects are moving in the same direction, okay, we have to add the velocity of the two objects now to get the relative velocity. Number two, if the two objects are moving in opposite direction, in that case we have to separate the two velocities to get the relative velocity. Okay, so let's see some examples. So example one, a man sits inside a moving bus that is moving with a speed of 25 meter per second. If the speed of the man is 12 meter per second, we are asked to Calculate the velocity of the man. Okay, we should calculate the, is the man's velocity relative to the earth when the man walks to the driver at the front. Then when he walks back to his seat. Okay, so from the question, we know that the speed of the car or the speed of the ball, sorry, is 25 meter per second. Okay, and the man's speed is 12 meter per second. Right now, since the man is walking towards the driver, so in that case, the movement of the man and that of the bus is in the same direction. So, in that case, we have to add both velocities 
to get the relative velocity. So let's move to the next slide to see that. Okay, so therefore, we can say the mass speed when it walks to the front will be equal to the mass speed, okay, plus the bus speed. So that will be 12 meter per second plus 25 meter per second, and that will be equal to 37 meter per second. Okay, so the second part of the question when the man walks back to his seat. So when the man walks back to his seat, is in the opposite direction to the, uh, to the direction of the bus. So in that case, we we'll have to subtract. Okay, so the mass speed when he walks back to his seat will be equal to the bus speed minus the mass speed. So in that case, we have been 25 meter per second minus 12 meter per second, and that will be equal to 13 meter per second. So let's take another example. Example two, two trains travel with velocities five meter per second and seven meter per second due north and west respectively. Calculate their relative velocity. So in solving questions like this, we have to represent it with a diagram. Okay, so the two trains, let's say train A has a velocity of five meter per second and is moving towards north. Why the second train, so in this case, let's say train B has a velocity of 7 meter per second and is moving due west. Okay, so um, let's say this is our starting point and this is the velocity of the first train. So it's moving towards north. Why from the starting point, the second train is moving towards um, um, west, right? Now to get the relative velocity will be the line that joins okay, the velocity of the two train, which is the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. So in this case, to get their relative velocity, what we simply have to do is to apply Pythagoras theorem. Remember Pythagoras theorem, the square of the hypotenuse is equals to the sum of the square of the adjacent and opposite side of a right angle triangle. So let's move to the next slide to complete the solving. Okay, so from the explanation here, the sides of the triangle represent the speed of the trains, right? Why the hypotenuse represent the relative velocity, just uh, as I have explained earlier. Okay, so we apply Pythagoras formula to find the relative velocity as follows, right? So the longest side of the right angle triangle is the hypotenuse. So since we are looking for the longest side of the right angle triangle, we have to take the square of the hypotenuse, which is the arrow v square, and that will be equal to 5 square plus 7 square. Okay, so 5 square will give us 25, and 7 square amounts to 49. So if we add those two together, that will give us 74, right? But we are looking for arrow v, not, we are looking for arrow v, not arrow v square. So in that case, we have to take the square root of both sides. So taking the square root of arrow v square, okay, the square root to kill off the square to give us arrow v, while we take the square root of 74. So the square root of 74 will be equal to 8.60 meter per second. Okay, so the relative velocity of the two train, or the relative velocity of the two train is equal to 8.60 meter per second. So we have come to the end of the preview of this video lesson and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want a complete video of this topic motion, you have to click on the link in the description below and this will take you to my school website. There you have to subscribe to watch the full video. And in the full video, we didn't stop here. We went further to talk about centripetal force and the application, centrifugal force and the application. We also talked about circular motion and we derived the relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity. And we also apply these formulas in solving a lot of questions. So it's very important that you subscribe to get the complete video. I believe you enjoyed this video. If yes, please hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and lastly, tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release the next video.